Hi everyone, it's time for day four on The Purpose Driven Life. And it is called Made to Last Forever. The verse is Ecclesiastes 3.11. God has planted eternity in the human heart. And the quote is from Abraham Lincoln. Surely God would not have created such a being as man to exist only for a day. No, no, man was made for immortality. This life is not all there is. Life on earth is just the dress rehearsal before the real production. You will spend far more time on the other side of death in eternity than you will here. Earth is the staging area, the preschool, the tryout for your life in eternity. It is the practice workout before the actual game, the warm-up lap before the race begins. This life is preparation for the next. At most, you will live a hundred years on earth, but you will spend forever in eternity. Your time on earth is, as Sir Thomas Brown said, but a small parenthesis of eternity. You were made to last forever. The Bible says, God has planted eternity in the human heart. You have an unborn instinct. You have an inborn instinct that longs for immortality. This is because God designed you in his image to live for eternity. Even though we know everyone eventually dies, death always seems unnatural and unfair. The reason we feel we should live forever is that God wired our brains with that desire. One day your heart will stop beating. That will be the end of your body and your time on earth, but it will not be the end of you. Your earthly body is just a temporary residence for your spirit. The Bible calls your earthly body a tent, but refers to your future body as a house. The Bible says, when this tent we live in, our body here on earth is torn down. God will have a house in heaven for us to live in a home he himself has made, which will last forever. While life on earth offers many choices, eternity offers only two, heaven or hell. Your relationship with God on earth will determine your relationship to him in eternity. If you learn to love and trust God's son, Jesus, you will be invited to spend the rest of eternity with him. On the other hand, if you reject his love, forgiveness, and salvation, you will spend eternity apart from God forever. C.S. Lewis said, There are two kinds of people, those who say to God, Thy will be done, and those to whom God says, All right then, have it your way. Tragically, many people will have to endure eternity without God because they chose to live without Him here on earth. When you fully comprehend that there is more to life than just here and now, and you realize that life is just preparation for eternity, you will begin to live differently. You will start living in light of eternity, and that will color how you handle every relationship, task, and circumstance. Suddenly, many activities, goals, and even problems that seemed so important will appear trivial, petty, and unworthy of your attention. The closer you live to God, the smaller everything else appears. When you live in light of eternity, your values change. You use your time and money more wisely. You place a high premium on relationships and character instead of fame or wealth or achievements or even fun. Your priorities are reordered. Keeping up with trends, fashions, and popular values just doesn't matter as much anymore. Paul said, I once thought all of these things were very important, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. If your time on earth were all there is to your life, I would suggest you start living it up immediately. I would forget, you could forget about being good and ethical and you wouldn't have to worry about any consequences or your actions. You could indulge yourself in total self-centeredness self because your actions would have no long-term repercussions. But, and this makes all the difference, death is not the end of you. Death is not your termination, but your transition into eternity. So there are eternal consequences to everything you do on earth. Every act of your life strikes some chord that will vibrate in eternity. The most damaging aspect of contemporary living is short-term thinking. 
To make the most of your life, you must keep the vision of eternity continually in your mind and the value of it in your heart. There's far more to life than just the here and now. Today is, vis is the visible tip of the iceberg. Eternity is all of the rest you don't see underneath the surface. What is it going to be like in eternity with God? Frankly, the capacity of our brains cannot handle the wonder and greatness of the heaven. It would be like trying to describe the internet to an ant. It's futile. Words have not been invented that could possibly convey the experience of eternity. The Bible says, No mere man has ever seen, heard, or imagined what wonderful things God has ready for those who love the Lord. However, God has given us glimpses of eternity in his word. We know that right now God is preparing our eternal home for us. In heaven, we will be reunited with loved ones who are believers, released from all pain and suffering, rewarded for our faithfulness on earth, and reassigned to do work that we will enjoy doing. We won't lie around on the clouds with halos playing harps. We will enjoy unbroken fellowship with God, and we will enjoy, and He will enjoy us for an unlimited, endless forever. One day Jesus will say, Come you who are blessed by my, by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. C.S. Lewis captured the concept of eternity on the last page of the Chronicles of Narnia, his seven-book children's fiction series. For us, this is the end of all of the stories, but for them it is only the beginning of the real story, all their life in this world had only been the cover and the title page. Now, at the last, they were beginning chapter one of the great story, which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever, in which and in which every chapter is better than the one before. God has a purpose for your life on earth, but it doesn't end here. His plan involves far more than a few decades that you will spend on this planet, it's more than the opportunity of a lifetime. God offers you an opportunity beyond your lifetime. The Bible says God's plans, set, God's plans endure forever. His purposes last eternity. The only times most people think about eternity is at funerals, and then it's often a shallow, sentimental thinking based on ignorance. You may feel it's morbid to think about death, but actually it's unhealthy to live in denial of death and not to consider what is inevitable. Only a fool would go through life unprepared for what we all know will eventually happen. You need to think more about eternity, not less. Just as the nine months you spent in your mother's womb were not the end in themselves, but preparation for life, so this life is preparation for the next. If you have a relationship with God through Jesus, you don't need to fear death. It is the door to eternity. It will last the it will be the last hour of your time on earth, but it won't be the last of you. Rather than being the end of your life, it will be your birthday to eternal life. The Bible says the world is not our home. We are looking forward to our everlasting home in heaven. Measured against eternity, our time on earth is just a blink of an eye, but the consequences of it will last forever. The deeds of this life are the destiny of the next. We should be realizing that every moment we spend in these earthly bodies is time spent away from our eternal home in heaven with Jesus. Years ago, a popular slogan encouraged people to live each day as it was the first day of the rest of your life. Actually, it would be wiser to live each day as if it were the last day of your life. Matthew Henry said, it ought to be the business of every day to prepare for our final day. Day four, thinking about my purpose. Points to ponder. There is more to life than just the here and now. Verse to remember. This world is fading away along with everything it craves. But if you do the will of God, you will live on forever. First John 2, 17. Question to consider. Since I was made to last forever, what is the one thing I should stop doing and the one thing I should start doing today? And you can hear this message on PurposeDriven.com slash day four. Thank you.
and we'll have day five tomorrow.